This is a short presentation of the paper Monostatic Sensing with OFDM under Phase Lots from Mitigation to Exploitation. This paper deals with integrated sensing and communication systems, for which impairments may have different implications in the sensing and the communication part. On the left is the ISAC transceiver, which sends a communication signal to a communication receiver on the right. And this signal is also backscattered by targets in the environment and received by the radar receiver, which shares an oscillator with the communication transmitter. On the other hand, the communication receiver has an independent oscillator. It is well known that due to this independent oscillator, the phase noise that the communication receiver does not convey any information about the communication channel. On the other hand, we will see because of the shared oscillator at the ISAC transceiver, the phase noise does tell you something about the geometry of the target. For a broader perspective on this, I refer you to the document listed below. Let's now go in a bit more mathematical detail. We consider the same setup with an ISAC transceiver and a communication receiver. The transmit signal in complex baseband is S of T, which is the communication waveform, which is upconverted and is subject to phase noise. From now on, we will only focus on the radar received signal and we will ignore the communication received. The complex baseband signal is denoted Y of T and is subject to a delay tau leading to phase rotations and a Doppler shift move. There is also multiplicative phase noise. This multiplicative phase noise is denoted W of T and tau. And we see here that this phase noise depends both on the time T and the distance which is reflected by tau. This then means that the phase noise will have delay dependent statistics. This is shown here on the right. We show here two phase noise trajectories as a function of time. If a target is nearby, this means tau is very small. That means these two phase noises, phi of t minus tau and phi of t, will be very similar. So the overall phase noise is very small. This is shown in red. On the other hand, when a target is far away, these two phi's will be very different and we will have a lot of phase noise. In both cases, it can be shown that the phase noise is stationary. So we see that immediately from looking at those trajectories that by looking at the phase noise, we can say something about the range of the target. On the other hand, the communication, the phase noise is non-stationary and doesn't tell you anything about the communication channel. Now we can use this knowledge in two ways. First of all is mitigation of the phase noise. The left side is a figure of the range RMSE as a function of the signal to noise ratio. There are here a number of curves, but we will just focus on two of them. In orange is the standard 2D FFT for getting the range and the Doppler under phase noise. Due to the phase noise, there's an error flooring effect. With our proposed method shown in red, we can get, we can get a lot of performance improvement and basically recover the same performance of a standard 2D FFT in the absence of phase noise. The figure on the right shows the range of MSC as a function of the target range. And here the message is that the further away the target is, the more the phase noise harms you. And with our proposed method, we can recover almost the same performance as in the phase noise free case. So here we mitigate the phase noise. Now we go one step further and try to exploit the phase noise. Here we use the fact that the phase noise statistics are delay dependent and we can use this to resolve range ambiguity. Range ambiguity means that when a target is very far away, it may appear as being nearby. But by looking at the empirical phase noise covariance, we can actually see that the target should be far away. How this reflects to the range RMEC is shown on the right. Again, we have range RMSE as a function of signal to noise ratio, and we have a target that is very far away. And we see now that the standard methods, even without phase noise, cannot resolve this range ambiguity, meaning that the far away target appears to be very close. With our proposed method, which does phase noise exploitation, we can recover the correct range. An interesting takeaway from this is that with a perfect oscillator, you would have worse performance than with an imperfect oscillator. 
So it's not always best to have the most expensive oscillator. This brings us to the key takeaways. We propose a fundamental rethinking of phase noise, turning it from foe to friend. We recall that phase noise is always detrimental for communication, but can be turned into an advantage for sensing. Here, focusing on monostatic sensing, which has a shared oscillator between the transmitter and the receiver. And in some sense, the inherent oscillator imperfections help the radar. One can interpret this in a variety of ways, but one way to think about it is that the statistics of the phase noise turn into signatures of the target and help us to identify where the targets are. And nature can help us to resolve ambiguities. And finally, it is sometimes better to have a cheaper oscillator than an expensive oscillator.